starting now. Guys. We're, welcome back. Um, we're, we're talking to the London Tigers. Uh, now we've got uh, some of the players that are actually playing with the semi-professional team, as well as um, some of them are actually working with the London Tigers, delivering some of the sporting programs within the inner city states uh, across London. So we'll get to find out, you know, uh, some of the programs that, that are happening with the London Tigers. So first of all, let me introduce you, Jawa Ali, who's the Operations Director for London Tigers. So wel welcome on the program, Jawa. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, everyone. And then we have here Wada, who's uh, one of the semi-pro players for London Tigers, but also now uh, he's actually working with the London Tigers. So welcome on the yeah. program, Wada. Hello, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. And then we have here Mohamed Betama, who's again um, a, a player with the London Tigers semi-pro team and uh, who's uh, involved in yesterday's tournament, which they won in, uh, in Hackney Marshes, which was the ILFL Unity Cup, the national competition. So well done on, on, on that one, Mohamed, and welcome on the program. Right, um, just wanted to actually highlight, you know, that you, you've been involved with the Lord. Let's talk about that because that's obviously one of the things that everybody uh, associates us with, you know, tournaments and football um, and particularly, you know, the success in some of the tournaments that we, we have. Uh, you, you know, can you let us know how, how was the tournament yesterday and what do you think the standard was? Obviously, uh, it's been uh, we were organized by IFL, the league that we won just a few, few weeks ago. Um, this was the cup that we, they, uh, we participated in. Um, we got through to the, we w ended up winning it playing FC Bengals in the finals and won on penalties. Um, it was a good co like competition to be in. It was um, it was a good good competition to be in. To be fair, it was a uh, very well organised and it was a lot of good teams. But our team was obviously we ended up you know it was it was we were a better team in the tournament. But it was a uh, no a very good tournament to be in. To be fair, I think so Mohammed's being a bit humble in the semi final. <laughs> Oh, were, you, were you there yourself? Yeah, I was there. Oh, he, oh, okay, he okay. one of the goals of the tournament. A brilliant ball crossed in from the right-hand side. He took the first touch on his knee and just, you know, smashed it into, <laughs> into the net. It was a very good top-class finish. And he's, he's not just talented, his whole family is talented. Yeah. His brother went in goal for the final. Two minutes before the end, our goalkeeper, Halal Mohammed got a knock. And Rafiq put the shirt on and he saved two penalties. So, you know, they've Fantastic. got a big sporting family. So. Yeah, they do, yeah. No, so, no. so let us know. I mean, you know, one of the things that we, we wanted to know is, um, you know, when did you start with L London Tigers? Well, it all started for me when I was about eight years old. Um, I went to, uh, we live in Lisson Green Estate. You're about 40 now, yeah? Um, <laughs> yeah I just turned 23, to be fair. <laughs> 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 no, but um, I was about eight years old um, and I knew there was a training session happening every Saturday at the football pitch and um, my dad took me for the first time. Just the first time I actually went to the football pitch. We met Tariq for the first time and um, this is where I met the lads as well. For the first time, Wada and, and all the, you know, Badawi, Musib, and all these other guys, um, we, li we went, started going every Saturdays and um, met new people, etc. And that's where the foundation for me started for me. So um, since then, I got valuable experience and gained new skills playing with good players. And um, I mean, our, our, our state has got very talented players, etc. Uh, very talented players, and um, yeah. I've from there, I've just been going on. But you've moved on to playing uh, from Lisson Green Estate, uh, <laughs> you know, where you're talking about. You moved on to playing international for Libya. Is, was it the under 17s team? Well, it started from the under 17s team. And then just only uh, last, the last year, I was with under 23s as well. Um, literally, it, all st it all started from somewhere, obviously, some Tigers. And uh, I ended up going to uh, um, Watford when I was, uh, si when I was 18. Had uh, played with for them for six months. Um, from there, I went on to play non-league football. Went up to with Paisley Eddie in the Conference Prem at the time. Um, the season after that, I went to Hampton and Richmond, and um, and f after that, I went to they, there's a team in Libya. The one of the main teams in Libya, the Premiership teams over there, offered me a, a, a contract to go over there and play for them, and that's how I got recognition to play for the under twenty threes as well. Um, we also played in the African Champions League. Um, where we made it to the last state of the Africa, the whole Africa. Um, we played all the main teams in the Africa. You know, um, you might have heard of Ehli, uh, Egypt. Yeah. Um, we played. We actually knocked them out. They were the current ch champions at the time. We knocked them out. Um, and yeah, I mean, very good experience. And now, obviously, contract runs out in the summer. I'm probably going to end up looking to come back here. Inshallah. Okay. Well, you, while he was playing non-league football, he was on the same bench as Jamie Vardy a few seasons ago when he was playing for Hazen Yedding. Jamie Vardy was at Fleetwood Town, yeah. so 
You know, yeah. Jamie Vardy could be li player of the season in the Pre Barclays Premier League this no, year. Yeah. Wow, right, yeah. so, so as, as, as a similar calibre, eh? Hey? Well, hopefully, hopefully, inshallah. Well, <laughs> let's go on to Wada. We, you know, Wada has been also similar to yourself, <laughs> uh, you know, been involved with the London Tigers for... Uh, well, many years so whether you, uh, you, you can say when when you joined and you, you know so, um, for me my journey I think started when we was under 12s so just a, a small amount of us from the estate just um, kicking about and then London Tigers came out of nowhere started doing sessions on the concrete pitches in this and green so just a bunch of us came together entered into a, a league a Sunday league which was Lily Road and for us it was the first playing on grass and so forth so then from then we all decided that football we want to pursue this career and so forth and London Tigers was providing opportunities for us. So um, from ranks that we grew up in ranks we had a very strong under 13s team that we won all our matches in the league. A few players were scouted to go to trials and got like we had like three players. I think even you got a trial with another club. Marcus was another one who got trial with Fulham. So players were going and being taken away from our squad but throughout that time I think it was more from the coaches they were building our mindset into becoming professional athletes and so forth and prepare, prepare, preparing us to get onto this journey of trying to be professional footballers so um, at the age of like 16 and so forth it gets a bit more difficult you know especially on the estates and so forth how you get it's time to make decisions a few of us decided to pursue the football like me, me and a few others and um, we got into the London Tigers first team which was at like semi-professional standard very good level and from there I managed myself to get onto um, from there I actually went straight into Conference South which is playing for Maidenhead and that was a it was a big step because I, I took about six leagues difference and it was just all out of nowhere and of course if London Tigers hadn't been there then I would have never pursued the football maybe gone on other paths as friends that I have have taken so without London Tigers the football career for me wouldn't have probably never happened but then you also had some international spells as well playing in Sweden Norway I think is it you know? uh, Norway was a tournament the Dana Cup okay. that was when we were young like under 16s but um, two seasons ago I decided just to travel and try to play football abroad as this is one of the things as a kid you always want to do and play professional in another country so uh, we went to Dubai with a former teammate Hardy who was out there playing had a couple trials here and there but didn't really work out Went to Bahrain after that, which is a small island just off UAE. Uh, signed for a club out there, stayed there for a few months, playing with professional teams in the national stadium and so forth. And then from there, I came back to London for a little while, then got signed for a club in Sweden who were interested. And then I played out there for another six months. And so now I'm back in England. I'm probably looking to go into a Ryman League or Conference South or something among these lines. How does it feel b for both of you? I mean, playing with London Tigers in the FA Cup, FA Vars, which I mean, I, I think, was it last year that London Tigers won at least four rounds of the 14 round competition, which actually uh, Arsenal won in the end. But yeah. how does it feel for you guys that from typical, I mean, people, even, even the local media, they, yeah. they still write about us as, you know, uh, the football team from Lisson Green State, that they actually uh, you know, make it a point to actually say that because their their point of view is is quite a story to actually put in that the football team started from this state, yeah. and uh, and now they're playing the FA Cup against uh, you know many of the semi pro uh, clubs across the country. Yeah, definitely. So if you if you look at the opportunities we do have, there are not many. So when when a club went for London Tigers, for example, have the opportunity for us to play in the FA Cup, which is which is renowned across the world and everyone knows it's, it's a huge opportunity especially when we get to travel play against the bigger teams nothing gets better than that for Absolutely. us this is the games we love and this is the games we want to play but n now also uh you know fr from your point of view you're actually involved with the london tigers now as a worker yeah. so tell us a little bit about that so um as i've come what back from, so i'm back from sweden looking for work and london tigers have come in and they said of course there's opportunity for you as always so um they offered me a sports development officer role and my core project that I have to work on is a mentorship program where like myself um, to get children or young youth off the streets to get them into our workshops to develop them work on their mindset their goals give them direction and so forth so we we can do many things with them just even guidance and just the openness that they can come to us for advice sincere advice and so forth and we can give them some direction and guidance and put them in the directions in which they want to go so that's one of the main projects. 
also we do um, football sessions on the state similar to what we used to have um, any players that want to join our age groups any age groups we have various amount of teams Sunday league also they can join um, Tigers first team so we provide a lot of opportunities but my core project is to bring in the youth as there's so much life decisions they need to make at that crucial age and try and guide them in the right direction away from the wrong decisions in life so do you i mean obviously you're working in uh you know housing states and you know with with lots of young people who are living in inner city areas do you come across uh, difficult children like betama um, i mean you know who, who give you grief and how, how do you handle them so um no you can't for me there isn't one approach there's every kid is different and you have to give every child his kind of you have to adapt accordingly so if you can see that one he wants to be a leader give him captaincy maybe if one is quiet engage him in the group so each one needs to be kind of nurtured in his own way however generally just a sense of like we bring the community together people come together and they can aspire they, like if they see me and Mohammed Betama from Listen Green making it as a professional footballer they believe that they can do this so we're, we're role models and we're, we're providing opportunities for these so that's how we feel. But that's the similar things that some of the players that has gone through Jawa within within, within within the club. Like, for example, uh, you've got Ivan, you've got Marco. Uh, yeah. He's playing in Cyprus Premier Division. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, people are looking up to these things. But similar like that, where you've got the players as one angle, but then you've got workers and coaches that have also been very inspiring, that people have come through as volunteers within the organisation. And now they're actually premiership um, club managers of uh, in, in, in Lithuania. There is, and definitely it's, it's not just about the playing opportunity, it's about growing and developing people as individuals. How do you upskill them and give them the opportunity? So someone like Valdis Dombrowskis, who joined us as a volunteer to look after the under-18s, he went on to get his A licence and manage our semi-pro team. He won the Asian Community Cup with our semi-pro team at Chelsea, at Stamford Bridge. And now he's the manager of uh, uh, of Zalgris, uh, which is the top Lithuanian champion. And they'll be playing in the Champions League next year. And he's the head coach. So hopefully, if, he, if they get an English team, we'll get some tickets and watch some Champions League football. But uh, another of the coaches, Eddie uh, Cardoso, who really revolutionised the way we play. Everyone knows London Tigers mm -hmm. as a team who plays passing football. We're not a long ball team. And Eddie was the one who came up with that philosophy. He's the Angolan Academy uh, head coach, so he's moved on. Uh, another guy, Georgie, um, uh, he's the academy coach for Dynamo Tbilisi in Georgia. So a lot of people have come to the organization and really developed. And uh, the cu our current semi-pro team manager, Arman Kavaja, he started with us with uh, one of the uh, a few age groups bef uh, older than Wada at the age of 15 as a player. And now he's got a UEFA A license coach, he's a level three physio, and he's done all the youth modules one, two, and three. So he's one of the highest level coaches you can be as a 27 year old. Um, obviously, management is different to coaching. Uh, he's still adapting and learning how to manage people because he's a young person himself. A lot of the players are older than him. So these are the things that we want to support and develop in people because it's about giving social skills that people can then move on. A lot of these guys will also mention that it's not the football they learn at London Tigers, hanging around with coaches like Tariq and other people. They learn about respect. They learn about the discipline in life and what's important and keeping the balance, balance of things. Um, so, I mean, one of the other things I, I wanted to find out from you as he's talking, I was, I was thinking, actually, you know, coaching, you know, this is one thing that I've, I've seen mainstream youth teams uh, have parents that are, have been uh, managing uh, the teams. How, how did you find the coaching of, of London Tigers? Because I think, you know, that, that plays a very key role. That we, you know, because obviously, and, I, and I'm saying it from people's perspective, mm. really, that many, many people just used to come forward to watch London Tigers play. Why is that? Tigers play a certain way of football that a lot of teams in the league don't, don't play. I mean, if you go and watch the Spartan Premiership, a uh, Premier League division now, you'll see a lot of them just hoofing the ball, getting it up to their strikes, etc. But... As you said, Eddie's come into the things, put a philosophy in the t uh, in, in in this team where we just play, we play football and we try to enjoy football them out of it. Um, now, obviously, that's why Tigers are known, even from the first team to their under 16s or 14s. They're all playing. They're all we all play a, a certain type of football. 
So I think um, we that that's the that's the way football should be played. But how do you guys feel being part of a club where they have their own stadium as well as their own sports complex now with the 3G pitch and and everything else? I mean, can you see the development when you started at eight years old and and now you're seeing uh, typically Tigers running on a concrete pitch in, uh, in in the state and now where they are? So um, thinking back to how it was, I remember it was a bit of touch and go when like, I remember working with Tarek as he was our coach. Opportunities, he was giving us opportunities or trying to arrange tournaments and so forth, but we wasn't sure things were definitely going to happen. Whereas Tigers now, like before, I think we were ground sharing and we, would, we didn't know if this was going to be our home ground next season and we didn't have a place to train and so forth. But London Tigers now, they have all these like the facilities and it's theirs. So whereas training has its routine, no interference, it's London Tigers. And I know their home ground, for example, is theirs and so forth. So it's come a very long way. And I think there's even more potential to grow and, and for it to, to increase and so forth in the future. So it's amazing the transition they've made over the... Just it feels like a short period of time, but it's, it must have been hard work behind the scenes. I think these guys are wishing they were still eight or nine years old now because <laughs> now the facilities that are there, they'll definitely it's make amazing. it grow because they have the talent. Yeah. I think I, you know, so sometimes when I look at the, the you know, what, what London Tigers have now, I, I sometimes feel I wish I was young now. I would have showed everyone, yeah, uh, you know, how, how, how it's done. Because I've always said, you know, for any sport development, you need good facilities, good coaching. And, and that's so important for player development for any sport. It doesn't matter. I used to challenge people uh, going back many years. And I said, give me the money. Uh, all right, I'm, I'm a specialist in sport, but give me any sport. But yeah. give me the appropriate money for the coach and for the facility, I will show you how, how, how I develop. Because ultimately, if you don't have the right facilities, you don't have the right coaching, how, how is a youth going to develop himself and become uh, really, really talented in that sport? But one of the other things I wanted to highlight is, you know, obviously, so, you know, when, we, when, when you guys jo joined in with London Tigers in a very multicultural area, you know, there, there was headlines uh, of football speaks, London Tigers speaks all languages, and it was all through football. Um, so imagine with all the nationalities or different nationalities that you're meeting, particularly in the semi-pro team. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I was there at one game and, and suddenly the league secretary said, um, you know, how do you get around with all the foreign rain? So, uh, and how many do you have? And suddenly we counted and it was 11 players, 11 different countries. It's just a, a coincidence that, you know, we, we did a count there. But, uh, you know, how do you guys feel integrating with all the other community people? Because we had a, a bit of a, you, you have, you've had a bit of a tidal wave. Well, I think, um, especially in terms of football, there isn't it's not based on which country you're from or you know which nation you are or however it's football speaks its own language so if we if land tags believe you're good enough and you have the ability and you have potential then surely it doesn't matter we'll come together we'll work together and we'll build a good team and throughout the whole time even our managers have been from like we've had eddie he was from angola and we had um georgie who was from georgia funny enough and we had valdez who was from lithuania and you could see the, the managers they brought in it wasn't to a specific colour or race and so forth and the players they whoever wanted to just play football in, in on the floor in this kind of artistic way was allowed to come and they wanted to be a part of it okay <coughs> we're gonna have to take a break uh, now guys but really appreciating thank you for you guys to no you problem, jo join in the program and i hope hopefully you come in for, for more of a longer time in in the future we'll, we'll continue the discussion straight after the break